Proud of our guys. Got a lot of respect for um, this Indiana team. I think they're they're really talented. Bona fide NCAA tournament team. I know they've hit some struggles, but uh, got a lot of respect for, for their talent and for uh, the job that Mike's doing um, and his staff is doing. And I just thought our guys were phenomenal uh, in the closing two or three minutes. We were. Um, you know, we had some guys struggling physically, uh, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, their defense has something to do with it. But uh, we did have some guys struggling physically. But um, uh, 22 wasn't struggling. <laughs> Chris, this isn't the first game you've had that's gone down to the wire. It's not the first game that you've had to figure some things out in the final seconds. Did you learn anything new about your team and the way this one transpired? No, I think Adam. Um, you know, we just got to make sure that we're doing uh, as good a job as we can getting the ball to our, our playmakers. And sometimes that changes. You know, EJ was struggling to get to his spots tonight. Um, uh, and then our playmakers have to make the right read. And, and 22 was a fantastic playmaker tonight, both for himself and for others. So I give uh, Malachi a lot of credit. But uh, it was really simple. I thought we executed exceptionally well in the last two minutes. Really, really well. Um, and I want to give our crowd a benefit, uh, a, lot of, a lot of love. I thought our crowd was great the last really 10 minutes when we needed it. I thought, you know, I thought uh, there was a stretch of the game where they got a little bit of momentum and we could, I could feel our guys get, you know, get a little frustrated, maybe even a little, you know, just frustrated. We're missing shots and uh, we just tried to keep it really simple and keep it in our playmakers' hands and our execution on offense and on defense. We're, was was good, but I, it's been good all year late, to be honest with you, with, uh, well, like I said, with the exception of two games. So with, with a minute 23 to go or whatever it was, when Indiana comes out of the timeout, EJ gets the steal. Um, how big of a moment was that? It's kind of an obvious question, but that to, for them, Mike Woodson was lamenting that at length in here. Yeah, I thought that EJ did a great job. I, I really want to give EJ credit because EJ, you know, asked to guard Trace um, and um, I thought he was able to give him different angles and keep a body on him. And Trace is such a phenomenal player. But that probably took a lot out and, and, and affected EJ's uh, offense. But uh, he was, uh, it was a big time deflection. Chris, it kind of looked like you were just giving Malachi a ball screen to let him kind of go from there at the end of the game. Was that kind of the gist of it? And then, I guess, how is your comfort level in putting him in those positions kind of developed over the course of the year? Yeah, as you, as you guys know, and as you know, Bill, watching us, I mean, we've evolved into that a lot here in the last month. Now, we weren't that way at the beginning of the year because he wasn't, his game wasn't at that point. Of the year. It was still a little too fast for him. But uh, we put him in a combination of the single and double ball screens and then also ran him off some actions. It was about a combination of three or four set plays uh, that all kind of finished looking similar. Um, but they were a little bit different, different variations. Um, about four, yeah, about four, to four different ones. And then the baseline underneath and overtime, EJ made a great individual play. We just tried to isolate him on that side. Um, Malachi, is, Malachi was in here, he said, you know, I, I try not to take bad shots, and I think that does kind of stand out about him. He just sort of knows how to get to his spots. Like yeah. his, his level of, of sort of understanding that as a true freshman, is that elevated for guys you've been around? Uh, it is. His maturity levels elevated. I've said that all along. He's he's one of the most mature freshmen I've ever coached. Just uh, in terms of across the board, you know, just <clears throat> really high maturity level. Some of that's with his IQ and feel for the game, which is really growing in the last, you know, really. I mean, if you saw us in Florida, you would say, okay, he's a completely different player. And those of you that were in Florida, you would say that right now. He is completely different. He's worked at it. He's taking coaching and he's taking criticism and found a way to get better. And, and uh, that's maturity, right? You know, that's maturity. That's a sign of maturity. I'm not blaming anybody else. I'm accepting accountability. I'm going to find a way to get better. I'm going to really work at it. And that's just, that's a great sign of maturity. Coach, how uh, tangible was the momentum shift there at the end of regulation when you guys were in the huddle going into overtime? And what was the confidence level from, from you guys and your team at that point? 
Um, I, I think they were, you know, they were really confident. We were really glad we got it to overtime. You know, they they were up four with the ball with what a minute twenty three or twenty four to go. You know, but it's still a long game. Um, we just wanted to make them earn it in the half court, and um, and then quickly get into a couple actions that we had that we talked about in the timeout, but not. We honestly didn't have the legs to like really push it off of um, off of misses, you know. Where where normally I'd like to have some freedom and push it off of misses, we just didn't have the, the speed or the legs to do that. But um, you yeah. know, yeah, it was a long game, but it was you know coming back that them with the ball, you know that 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 didn't look great at that point. And you wanted guys other than EJ to step up, step up offensively, of course. And, and Eugene Brown had ten points for you guys tonight. Yeah. Um, how big was was that lift? I thought Gene was great. Jamari's three was huge. He's got to look to shoot even more. I thought Michi's uh, readiness to shoot after overtime on the three was critical. Um, so we we needed that. But uh, yeah, Gene's play overall was was really good for us. Um, first. In the last 10 seconds of regulation, I don't know, but it would just seem like the best possible pitch in scenario. We got EJ yeah. and Malachi on the ball yeah. offense, and then Jamari's the guy who's starting. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to draw anything better than that. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, um, they knew what we were running. They didn't want to call a timeout. Um, I did think about it, though. You know, I, I you're, you're thinking on the fly there, and I, I did think I was very close to calling a timeout, but. I'd rather not call a timeout in that situation if we get organized quickly enough. And I thought we did get organized quickly enough. Um, and I did love our defensive thrust after our make, uh, but I thought Jamari was really good off the ball. Yeah. I just thought our awareness could have been a little bit better. And it was not a game, but we're going to build out there. I think everybody knew he could score at this level once he kind of figured it out. But that ability to kind of know how to score, how to do it efficiently. It doesn't even when like, he's not necessarily shooting well at points. He, he just didn't make the shot that nice, but it's because he's shooting a bunch of bad shots. Is that a rare skill for that age to yeah, not be able to do it but know how to do it? Both both it's he's a talented kid and um, you know he played kind of the wing and the full for some uh, in high school he's really well coached but um, maybe he didn't get the you know I think he we're seeing all of his kind of repertoire of ball skills and uh, and he's really grown in that area too. Um, he's got some guys really well coached in high school. He's got a great trainer, Jason Dawson. He's a really committed uh, kid in terms of working on his skills and that back, you know, back to his maturity. But he can get to his spots as well as anybody I've coached. Chris, you talked after the last game about you know, when you get guys rest, but Malachi and the freshman wall. Obviously, tonight was not an opportunity to do that, but he comes through. You know, when you when you have a freshman who can continue to fight through things, he said he's feeling good, you know, physically as as, as much as anyone is. Um, you know, what does that do when when a young guy can do that for you? Yeah, he's uh, we we've, we've uh, you know I, I I told you guys last after the Iowa game I played him more than I'd like to play him. It, it's not like I, I just would like to I just want to try to keep him fresh, but we've just needed every minute from him and his ability to play make and, and have ball skills. And, and the, you know, make reads, get to his spots. You know, with our team this year, sometimes Cedric can do that. We have some other guys that can do it at times, but uh, he certainly uh, can do it at the highest level right now. And I, sort of a, a strange question, but is he the player he is right now? If you guys have Justice capable of, of kind of taking that role over, you know, I know it's um, a bigger picture question, but it's a good question. But I would like to see what that was like. Okay. If you give me an option, I'll yeah. play. I'd like to see Justice out there and see if Malachi figured it out. I think he probably would. When the, I think it was the first or second game, he makes a pass. I think it was also the EJ first game. game. Yeah. And was that something Zed. you guys or to Zed, Yes. Was that something you guys knew early on he could no. do? And, no. We we put him in some of those spots uh, early, but um, I don't think you'd know that until the lights are on fully. Um, I don't think you fully know that until the lights are on. After Iowa grabbed 20 offensive rebounds the other day, so he had come to get 15 and 0 against Iowa, you said you just felt like they also they got more loose balls. Do you think that happened today? Do you think it was more long rebounds? There were some long rebounds, but we got to get better at it. I mean, we got to get better at that. Like that's that's got to be more important to us uh, than what it is right now. Bottom line, it's got to be more important to us than what it is right now. 
There are some that bounced over our heads. There were some long rebounds. Their size got us at times. But um, I've got to coach that better, and we've got to take more ownership of that. It's not, it's not acceptable right now. Coach, coming off that Iowa loss, back at home, short turnaround, how much did this win, kind of climbing out there, it looked like you might drop another game, how much does it mean to the team to kind of be able to pull out a win here? Uh, I think it means I think it means a lot. We beat a good team. Uh, we beat a good team that had you know time to. I don't know what all you know if that's overrated having time to prepare, but certainly they had a freshness to them. But we beat a good team. Um, I just think it's a huge, huge boost for us. I just I just think the poise, the composure, and the grit we showed late. Uh, it can it just can there cannot be enough said about that with our with our guys. Um, they just can't, and uh, I'm super proud of them. Chris, this isn't a team that's lost back-to-back -back games at all this season. What has allowed, is it maturity? Is it, is it, what has allowed you guys to regroup and kind of, you know, build those? DJ, Kyle, Justin, Jamari, our, um, our captains, Justice, um, those five guys. Your captains are the ones that set the tone for that after a loss, so. It's those those guys set the tone in the locker room. I mean, it could job. Those guys set the tone in the locker room after a loss. All right, we have two more. Spencer and Steve in the back there. I guess kind of build off of that asked you earlier. You were talking about that pressure the ball was out there. When you see a performance like that, does that almost make you, you know, start to stay in practice a little bit? That, hey, are you sure you're feeling fine? Because it certainly didn't seem like you said any sort of wall out there. Yeah, and listen. Uh, if there's no wall, I'm good with that. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm not. Let's not. Let's not make up a, a wall if there is no wall. Um, uh, I'm. I'm fine with there being no wall at any time. I just am aware of the amount of minutes I'm playing a young guy with young legs, and uh, and now we've asked him to do a lot more than what we did earlier in the year. Um, but um, you know, and he's responded to times where he struggled. He struggled at Michigan early and uh, struggled defensively at times Garden Brooks and then he responded in the second half and was better on both ends so I think we're going to continue to have those kind of moments uh, from him he's not he's not going to be you know this every night um, it's too much to expect of a kid but he's been phenomenal yeah, all's well that ends well obviously but this was a little bit reminiscent of the other day when uh, I think until that jam that Liddell had with five seconds left, I think he went 12 minutes and had one field goal. Just, uh, I don't know, what were they doing over the first of that second half? After you got ahead by 11, they just kind of- Is this the last question? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna leave on this question. <laughs> okay. We got, oh, we got more. That, Add one more question to this here. I'll answer this one. I okay, need do, one do more that question. One somebody come up with something better than Okay, that. no, it's not. It's a good question. It's a fair question, but I need a better one to go home on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd have to look at it. I'd have to look at it, Steve. I, I don't know. Um, I'd have to, you know, I think we missed some shots. I think we, um, didn't play with quite enough force, uh, but they're a good defensive team, so give them credit. They're a really good defensive team. But I did not love our execution and our pace during that stretch. Um, so I'd have to look at it. I just did not love I, – the, the, I didn't love our execution and pace. I thought we missed some open looks um, and give their defense credit. Given what's on the yeah you know what I, I think I try not to do that because you can drive yourself crazy I mean I'll just be spinning in my office and you know immediately think of worst case scenarios and five game losing streaks and you know I, I just I think as much as anything I have about six things that I write on my notes every game, okay? And um, they are things that are really, really important to me in life and in coaching. And uh, staying in the moment is certainly one of them. And I have something that I say that just tries to remind me to stay as present as possible. So uh, this win was important, but um, I try not to look too far ahead and we didn't wallow in the loss on Saturday either. You can't in this league. You got to move forward.